Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Notion Hub and in this video, I'm going to show you the most important features of Xiaomi 11T Pro. By the way, I have made a dedicated video for the tips and tricks section where I've talked about many things which I won't be covering in this video. Definitely check out that video as well, link will be in the description. With that said, the most highlighting feature about this phone is definitely its performance. This phone sports a Snapdragon 888 5G processor with Adreno 660 GPU with up to 12GB of LPDDR5 RAM and up to 256GB of VFS 3.1 storage. Purely in terms of performance, it is the best in its price segment. Moving on, this one also comes with an amazing looking display. It comes with a 6.67 inch AMOLED display, well Xiaomi calls it the AMOLED dot display, with 120Hz screen refresh rate with HDR10 plus support, Corning Gorilla Glass vectors for protection and it also has Dolby Vision support. Once again, this is one of the best looking displays in this price segment. Moving on, this phone also has some pretty impressive cameras. On the back, this phone comes with a triple camera setup with a 108 megapixel primary camera and for selfies, we get a 16 megapixel camera. These are some sample shots. We also get a wide angle camera on this phone. It's an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with 118 degree field of view. These are some sample shots. Next best thing about this phone is its super fast charging speeds. This phone comes with a 5000 mAh battery and a 120 watt Xiaomi hypercharger inside the box. You can charge your phone from 0 to 100% in just 17 minutes. That's definitely some insane charging speeds. If you just want like 80% of charge, you can just charge your phone for 10 minutes and bam, it's 80%. Charging speeds are really impressive on this phone. Next, this phone also has a very good haptic engine. Now this is actually one of those things which makes your phone feel more premium. This phone has an x-axis linear vibration motor and gives out a nice haptic feedback. You can also change the vibration intensity from settings. Next, this phone comes with dual stereo speakers which sound amazing. They support Dolby Atmos and the audio signature has been designed by Harman Kardon and they also support 360 surround sound. Here's a quick audio preview. They sound absolutely fantastic whether it's for watching movies or for playing games. By the way, this phone also supports high-res audio. If you have a good headset, you can also enjoy some high-quality audio. Next we have Sidebar. Now this is a very interesting and useful feature for people who are into productivity. Once you enable this feature, you can just swipe from the edge of the screen to bring up the sidebar. Now from here, you can open applications and drag it to the top or bottom of the screen to open it in a split screen mode or just drag the application to the center of the screen to open that application in a floating window. It's a super useful feature and I would definitely recommend you to use it. Once you open a floating window, you can resize it, drag it around and you can drag it to the corner to make it into a really small window. Next, we have a super cool shortcut for the fingerprint scanner. Once you have enabled it and configured it, you can just double tap on the fingerprint scanner to take a screenshot or do other things. You can customize it from settings. Now the next best thing about this phone would be the dark mode. Now you can enable this feature from display settings and once you turn it on, all the UI elements change to the dark mode theme and now the UI looks much more cooler. Now this dark mode helps you save some battery and strains your eyes less if you're using your phone late at night. 
Next we have always on display. Now this is a feature which always displays your time and date information whenever you lock your phone. By default it's not turned on but you can enable it from the display settings. You can also change the clock style and the background. You can also schedule it to turn on and turn off automatically at a specific time to save a little more battery. Next we have Game Speed Booster 2.0. Now this one feature gives you a lot of cool features. It improves your gaming experience. You can configure in-game shortcuts, restrict network switching while playing game, restrict background sync, prioritize network usage. You can also enable silent mode, do not disturb mode and even fix screen brightness. You can just add games to the list and every time you open a game, all these settings are enabled automatically. Now with 2.0, you can also increase touch responsiveness, sensitivity and even add touch resistance areas. Next, we can also hide the notch on this phone. For some reason, if you don't like this particular notch or cutout, you can hide it using this feature. Next, we have a new feature called Clear Speaker, which will just clean up the speakers. Once you just turn it on, your phone will play an audio for 30 seconds to clear out the dust or water clogs. Going on next, we have a brand new feature, which allows us to add more than one face for face unlock feature. Let's say you have multiple people using the same phone in your home, maybe it's a phone for your kids, you can add more than one person for the facial recognition system. Now going on next, this phone also has a dedicated night mode. It does take some better pictures when you compare it to the auto mode, but still, results are nowhere as good as a Pixel phone. By the way, you can still use the Google's camera application to take better pictures in low lighting conditions. Next we have Palm Shutter. Now this is a new feature added with the latest version of MIUI and it's also available on all of the phones. Once you enable this feature, you can just show your palm to your front camera to take a selfie. Next we have Beauty FX. Now this is a new feature that can literally change the way you look. It gives you various options to change your physical appearance, add makeup effects and even add filters as well. Next we have Beautify for video, which can make you look a bit more beautiful even while recording a video. Next we have Panorama Selfie Mode. On other phones it's also called as Wider Selfie where you can just take a picture and twist your phone left and right to take a wider selfie or a panorama selfie. When done right, it does look pretty good. Now going on next, we can also change the blur intensity in a portrait shot. On previous Redmi and Xiaomi phones, we were just able to take portrait shots. But now on this phone, we can change the amount of background blur effect we want before taking a picture. And surprisingly, we can do it for both the front and rear cameras. Here's a quick sample. Now going on next, we also have slow motion video recording. We can record video at 1080p at 120fps or at 720p at 240fps and even at 960fps. Here's a quick sample footage. Next we have Wi-Fi Assistant. Now mostly, this feature will be enabled by default. This feature automatically switches your Wi-Fi connection depending upon the connection speed and signal strength. If for some reason, your Wi-Fi network is not working or if the Wi-Fi connection is poor, mobile data is turned on automatically. Next we have Secondary Space. Now this feature allows you to create a secondary space on your phone. That means you will be able to use a single phone as two different phones. In the secondary space, you can have completely different Google accounts, passwords and different set of applications as well. It's a pretty cool feature but personally I will recommend you not to use this feature as it can slow down your phone. If you have a flagship from Xiaomi, then you might consider, but most of the time, I'll recommend you not to use this feature. Going on next, we can also hide applications on this phone. You can do it directly from these settings. But this particular feature works only with the default launcher. Like if you install any third party launcher, say like Nova Launcher, then you can still see those hidden applications. But as long as you're using the default home screen launcher, those applications will be hidden. Next we have 108 MP mode. Even though this phone comes with a 108 megapixel camera, by default it compresses the images using pixel binning. For some reason, if you want to take a 108 megapixel resolution picture, then you can do that using this mode.
Next, we have vlog mode. Using this feature, we can record videos in different themes and produce them. Once you select a particular theme, you get the option to record short clips and then put them together. And this feature will automatically edit those clips in that particular theme and give you an amazing looking video. Going on next, we have 4K time-lapse. And just like the name suggests, we can record a time-lapse video in 4K resolution. Here's a quick sample footage. Next, we have steady video. By default, the footage that you get from this phone is already stabilized. But for some reason, if you want further stabilization, you can turn on steady video mode. In this mode, footage is cropped a bit more, but you'll get a much more stable footage. Here's a quick video sample. Next, we have a brand new control center which looks pretty similar to iOS and you can enable it from the display settings. Once you enable it, you can swipe from the right side corner for the control center or the notification toggles and you can swipe from the left side for the regular notifications. Yes, it's copied, but who cares, it's really nice. Going on next, we have floating windows. This is pretty similar to the Samsung's floating windows or pop-up windows, but with a slightly different implementation. You can enable this feature from settings. Now from recent apps menu, you can just press and hold on any application and then select the floating window icon to open the application in a floating window. Now you can move this around holding the top bar on the window, dismiss it by swapping on the bottom bar, tap and hold on the app and drag it to any corner and it will minimize to even smaller window. Now you can just swipe on it to dismiss it. It has a bit of a learning curve but it's a pretty good implementation. Next we have glance for MI. If you're someone who likes to change your lock screen wallpaper all the time, then this is a great feature for you. Once you enable this feature, every time you wake up your phone, you get a different wallpaper. From settings, you can also select categories so that you can get wallpapers only from those particular categories. Going on next, we have full screen gestures. And once you enable these gestures, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home, swipe and hold for recent apps, and you can swipe from the left side or right side to go back a step. For Google Assistant, swipe from the bottom left corner or bottom right corner diagonally and it will trigger Google Assistant. Besides that, you can also swipe left or right on the bottom part of the screen to quickly switch between the applications. Here's a quick preview. Next we have Game Turbo. Now just like the name suggests, this is a feature that's dedicated to improve your overall gaming experience. It bundles up a lot of things related to tweaks to improve the gaming performance and some quick in-game shortcuts, a place where you can uninstall games and finally you also have game do not disturb mode features like where you can answer calls hands free. You can also restrict brightness, restrict buttons and gestures. If you are a gamer, you should definitely check out these settings. Going on next, we can also change the screen refresh rate of this phone. This phone comes with a display with 120Hz refresh rate. And that definitely improves the overall experience, making things look much more smoother. So personally, I would set it to the maximum refresh rate all the time. But if you're someone who's worried about battery life, then you can go back to the 60 Hz. Next, we have dual video recording. From the stock camera application, we can access this new feature called dual video recording, where we can record the video from both the front and rear camera at the same time. We have two different setups, where the display is split into two equal parts. And the other setup is where the footage from one camera is overlaid on the other footage like a small pop-up. Well, this is a sample video for the dual video feature where we can record video with both the front and rear cameras and we can even switch between them as well. Next, we have clone mode. This is another new camera related feature where you can take a picture or a video of a person and clone them in the same image or video. So you can clone yourself or others. I know that sounds pretty crazy, but here's a quick sample. Next we have long exposure. This is another feature where you can take pictures with long exposures. We also got different modes like moving crowd, neon trails, oil painting, star trails and so on. Here's a quick preview. Next I'm going to show you some important MIUI 11 related features. First we have different notification styles. From here you can choose between Android style or MIUI styles and there is definitely a pretty significant difference between the notification styles of stock Android and MIUI. Next, we also have a new feature called Sky Edit. Even though it has been even on the previous MIUI 9 phones, this feature is still pretty new. 
using this feature you can literally change the sky in the background you get different presets and all of them look pretty cool next we have dynamic alarms now this is a brand new feature in MIUI 11 that gives you dynamic alarm tones depending upon the time of the day so if you have an alarm in the morning you get a different tone if you have it in the evening you get a different tone so that's the new dynamic alarm feature and we also get a lot of new natural sounds next we have in my share now this is a feature from xiaomi just like share it which can be used to transfer any kind of data between two smartphones when compared to share it at least this version is much more cleaner next we have video wallpapers now using this feature you can set up a video as your lock screen wallpaper or a home screen wallpaper here's a quick preview next we have digital well-being now this is a feature from google which literally tracks all your usage analyzes it and gives you a complete report using this feature you can track your usage and if you want you can also put restrictions upon yourself like if you don't want to use youtube for more than 15 minutes a day you can put such restrictions using this feature next we have bedtime mode now this feature is pretty similar to wind down from google's digital well-being and once you enable this feature and configure it it will automatically enable grayscale mode that's to make your display black and white at a specific time every day or depending upon your settings it just acts like a quick reminder for you to sleep next it offers ai mode for both the front and rear cameras just like most of the flagships these days this phone also offers ai mode for both the front and rear cameras depending upon the scene it automatically detects few elements like plants food or vehicles and then enhances some details about the image to make it look more pleasing these are some sample pictures next it offers portrait mode for both the front and rear cameras now this is like the most common feature we find in almost all the phones these days and even this phone offers that now these are some sample pictures Now going on next, we can also edit those portrait charts. Just open the picture in the default gallery application and click the aperture button on the top right corner of the screen and you get three options. First we can change the amount of background blur effect we want. Following that we have light trails where the background simply moves around to give you a pretty cool effect. And after that, finally we have the studio lighting effects. This is a new feature, at least as of now, it's not available on all the Xiaomi phones. Now going on next, this phone even offers electronic image stabilization. Now by default it's always turned on and because of electronic image stabilization, some part of the sensor is cropped and you get a cropped footage. For some reason if you don't want stabilization and want a much wider footage, you can always disable it from the settings. This is the sample footage. Stabilization looks pretty good. Now going on next we have quick ball. You want to use your phone single handedly? Then this is a great solution for you. Once you enable this feature, a floating bubble will pop up. You can use it in two ways. You can either tap and select the option or else we can swipe. Personally I like to go with swipe option with navigation keys. Once everything is properly set up, you can simply swipe on the floating bubble to go back, go home or even open recent tabs page. Now going on next we have some handy gestures. First we have the double tap to wake. Now this one is pretty simple. Just enable this feature and double tap your screen to wake it up. If you are using face unlock on this phone, then you can simply double tap your phone, phone wakes up, sees your face and immediately unlocks the phone. You don't even have to use the fingerprint scanner. It is super convenient. Next we have raise to wake. Now this is another super useful feature. Once you enable this feature, every time you raise your phone, your display lights up and shows you the lock screen. Once again, if you have enabled face unlock feature, it wakes up, sees your face and immediately unlocks the phone. So this feature in combination with face unlock works just like the latest iPhones. Now going on next, we have two super shortcuts to quickly open the camera application. First way is to open the camera application by pressing the power button twice. This particular shortcut works anywhere and anytime. Just enable it from additional settings and every time you press the power button twice, camera application will pop up almost immediately. Most of the time it works. 
Another way to open camera application is from the lock screen. Now once you enable this feature from lock screen settings, on your lock screen you can press the volume down button twice to quickly open the camera application. Well that's a feature and it works, but personally I still like to use the power button. Now going on next we have 3 finger screenshot. Now before I show you that feature, let me show you how to take a regular screenshot. On this phone or any other phone out there, especially Android phones, if you want to take a screenshot, press the volume down and power button both at the same time. Once you do that, your phone will take a screenshot. For some reason, if that's a bit difficult for you, you can always use the notification toggle. Now coming back to 3 finger screenshot, once you enable this feature, you can simply swipe down using 3 fingers to take a screenshot. This is personally my favorite way to take a screenshot. Next we have long screenshot. Now to take a long screenshot on this phone, first we need to take a regular screenshot. We can either use the buttons, notification toggle or the gesture. And once you have taken a picture, you will get a preview at the top right corner of the screen. Just click that and then click scroll. Your phone will scroll the current application automatically and then take a long screenshot. If you want to stop in between, you can always click the done button and it will take a long screenshot up to that point. You can find those long screenshots along with your regular screenshots. Next we have dual apps. Now Xiaomi has this awesome feature called dual apps which allows you to use two instances of the same application. That means you can use two Facebook accounts, two Instagram accounts, two Twitter accounts or even two WhatsApp accounts on the same phone. Now there are many phones out there that offer a similar feature but all those brands offer this feature only for few applications, especially social media applications. While on this phone, we can use dual apps feature on literally all the applications. Next we have reading mode. On many other phones it's also called as night mode and once you enable this feature, it puts a warm tint on the screen and filters the blue light. According to a research, blue light emitted by our displays at night will affect our sleep. So using this feature will prevent that. We can also change the intensity of the warm tint. We can also schedule it to turn on and turn off at a specific time or at sunrise and sunset. Going on next we have one handed mode. Now for some reason if you think this phone has a massive display and if you can't use it single handedly, you can use this feature. Once you turn on this feature, you can swipe on the navigation bar from home to left or right to shrink the screen. In this mode you can literally do anything, make calls, take pictures and do everything with a single hand. You can swipe in the same direction to go full screen, you can swipe in the opposite direction to switch to the other side and do it again to go full screen once again. From settings you can also change the size of this window. I meant the screen. Next we have some pretty cool gestures related to phone calls. First we have flip to silence finger. Now just like the name suggests, when your phone is lying on a flat surface when you get a call, you can flip your phone to silence the ringer. Next we have quiet ringer when lifted. Once you enable this feature, whenever you get a call, you can pick up your phone and the ringtone volume goes down. It won't go completely silent, but ringtone volume does go down. Next we have increasing ringtone volume. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a call, ringtone volume starts with low volume and gradually increases. Next we have flash when ringing. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a call, your flashlight, that's the rear flash, flickers. Next this phone has a super handy feature to identify unknown numbers. Just like Truecaller, Xiaomi collects information from various sources to identify spam and scam calls. It isn't as effective as Truecaller but it does work. Now going on next, we can also change the background app usage. MIUI offers you additional options to tweak individual apps to further improve battery life. You can completely stop applications from running in the background, you can restrict background access, you can restrict background sync and usage and do stuff like that. It might help, but usually its effects are not that visible. Now going on next, we have wireless display. Now using this feature, you can cast the screen of your phone to any television with Miracast or to a Chromecast. This feature works really well with MI TVs. Next we have MI Mover. Now if this is a brand new phone and if you want to transfer all your data from your previous Xiaomi phone to this new Xiaomi phone, you can use this feature. Just select MI Mover on both phones and do the needful to transfer all your data from your previous phone to your brand new phone. Next we have Local Backup. In Backup and Reset settings, we have the option to backup everything on your phone along with user data. This is really handy when you have to reset your phone and quickly take a backup of your apps. Now when you reset your phone, all this data will be deleted. So once you are done with the backup, copy it to your PC or a pen drive and transfer it back to your phone once you are done resetting your phone. Now going on next, we have themes. If you are someone who likes to tweak the look and feel of your phone, then Xiaomi phones or MIUI itself is great for that. 
you have tons of themes, tons of fonts and wallpapers and stuff. You can download it from the themes app and apply them with just a click of a button. Next we have a super handy feature called scanner. It's more like an application itself. Now this is how it looks like. You can scan a regular QR code and most importantly take pictures of documents. Now no matter which angle you take pictures in, it automatically aligns the page, changes the perspective and crops the image to give you the perfect document. You can also grayscale it and copy the text from the image. Next we have screen recording. Now if you are someone who likes to record the screen of your phone, then on this phone there is a dedicated application called recorder just to do that. Just open the application and click the record button. You will see a floating button and you can start recording whenever you want by clicking that big red button. Once you are done, you can click the stop button and you can find that recording in your gallery. Next we have auto start permission. No matter how many times you kill any application or close an application, some applications start automatically in the background, say like Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and they end up draining the battery, especially if you don't use those apps a lot. So using this feature you can restrict those applications from auto starting in the background. Next we have app vault. Now looking at the name you might think it's an app lock kind of a feature, well it's not. In the default launcher on the leftmost screen, you get a dedicated page with multiple widgets for quick shortcuts, notes, stock prices, call a cap feature, cricket scores and so on. So if you want to see this page, enable app vault and if you want to hide it, disable it. Next we have the option to mirror buttons. Now usually on most phones, especially phones with pure stock android, it doesn't give you the option to swap the back and menu button. But on this phone, we can do it. Next we have an app lock built into the system. We can set it up with a different password from your lock screen password and obviously lock applications. Now whenever you try to open any locked application, you have to either enter the password or we can use a fingerprint scanner. Now there are many third party applications which can do the same, but this feature comes inbuilt and it's quite secure. Next we have folder vault. Now using this feature, we can hide files on your phone. Whether it's a video, photo or any other file, you can hide all those files in the folder vault. To use this feature, open the file manager and swipe down until you see the lock icon. Once again, you have to set up a password and it can be different from any other password you have already set. Now once you are done configuring this feature, you can select any file, go to menu and click hide to hide that file. So guys, those were all the best features. If I missed on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and definitely check out my video on tips and tricks section, link is in the description. Now if you are planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description, it always helps the channel and if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I am Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off, have a nice day.